What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about some blasters. But which blaster? Which modified blaster am I going to be talking about today? Not the Magnum, not the Doomlands, not the Powerball. Ooh, the Mega with the stock attachment and the priming pump. No! No, today we're going to be talking about this monster this awesome Frankenstein monster right here. Okay, so quite a while back I was watching various Nerf videos. Whenever I came across a video by Walcom S7, who by the way, I'm giving total credit for this build to his idea, his inspiration to make this. And he had a, a blaster that he dubbed the Hell Sender. It was inspired by Doom video game series. And that was very much the motif in which he painted it. This, of course, is not painted yet and is not done. And what this is, is two Nerf Mega Magnus that I attached together here with some epoxy and a quarter inch thick piece of acrylic plexiglass, which then feeds down into this handle, which is from the Nerf Double Dealer. And from there, I cut up the other half of the Nerf Double Dealer shell, since I quite frankly had nothing else that I could use this blaster for, since I really don't like it. And once I did that, I attached it here and created an arm that goes up to a piece of steel that runs between the two triggers. So for a full video on how he did it, definitely check out Walcom S7's channel. I'm certain anybody viewing this is in the Nerf probably knows who he is. Maybe you like him, maybe you don't. But this was a very cool build and a very cool blaster, so I decided to make my own. Mine, of course, is a little different. His stock was from... Uh, the Zombie Strike uh, Sling Fire, whereas mine, of course, is from the Doomlands Double Dealer. And I also took some of these from the Nerf Shield attachment that hold Mega Darts and epoxy them to the side so I can have six darts at the ready. And how this works is to load it and prime it back, just like you would with one Mega Magnus. You load in your darts, rack it forward, fire both at once. And I know we have the twin shock, and that's cool, but my twin shock with the stock is easily several feet longer. Even without the stock, it's still a foot longer. And I just like the pistol grip and the feel of this, and I think it looks really cool. So let's go on to some firing, and after I do the firing demo, then we will come back, and I will take this apart and show you how I did up the trigger system. Okay, so I don't have a large, long yard to take this outside and show you ranges, but both blasters, I don't know if I pointed this out, but both of them are stock. I didn't do any spring upgrades, didn't remove any air restrictors, didn't do anything. Just used two stock blasters that I thrifted. And this other one, it came from a flea market. But I do have my hallway here, and that is a 25-foot tape measure. And let's see if I can actually hit... The ceiling without the, or not the ceiling, sorry, the, the end wall there, which is about 40 feet, without these mega darts crashing into the hallway and only making it halfway. Well, that's not too bad. See there, 25 feet. And they both struck the wall at the end and bounced back with about eh, 8 or 9 feet of bounce back. I know that's not a super accurate example or test, but these will hit 50, 60 feet straight shots if the darts don't whirly bird or go all wild or do whatever. Made it this far into the video, then you've got past the firing demo, and now we are on to the internals of this, which are very ugly and very sloppy and very much deserve the name Frankenstein, because it is just, mmm, it is ugly. It is a lot of epoxy and a lot of slop. So first of all, this is off the, vag uh, the uh, Doomlands Vagabond from Nerf, and I just screwed that on to cover up the side and the trigger assembly. The one on the other side is epoxied in place, so it ain't going nowhere. But I need one of them to attach 
so that I could get in here and work on anything I needed if it came apart. Now I've already cut the Out of Darts sticker that is on the back. So let's see if this is going to come apart without trouble. No. Once again, sorry, uh, Out of Darts. I had to cut your sticker down the center to get this off. But it required a little finagling because I didn't quite apparently exacto knife it all the way through with my razor blade. But yeah. So what it is is the, if this will focus, the original trigger here. And you'll notice I put some epoxy on here because this was literally flexing right through this center curve. And here I have a much bigger trigger spring than what was originally on it because to pull this back takes a considerable amount of force because you're pulling on two triggers that are connected by this iron rod, or not iron, but steel rod through them. And this is another quarter inch thick piece of, I don't lose my spring, quarter inch thick piece of... Uh, acrylic plexiglass, which I use in my cosplay builds, actually. I didn't buy it for Nerf. I just happened to have it lying around, and it's pretty sturdy. And on the end, I made this ugly, nasty, monstrous-looking hook because I do not have a 3D printer and don't even know how to work one. If I did have it, probably could figure it out, but don't have one. And then just reinforce this by slathering it with epoxy. And yeah, man, this is ugly. And the inside, too. This is the only piece that actually attaches fully to the front part of the blaster. So I really layered and gobbed on so much epoxy. And then also you can kind of see a little bit here on the underside, the gray from the epoxy putty. I mean, this is just held on so crazily, but it's solid. I can pick it up with just half the shell and it's stable. So that was kind of the point. So that pretty much wraps it up for this blaster, which was essentially just some thrifted and garbage blasters that I turned into something pretty cool. And once again, all thanks to Walcom S7 for the idea, not my idea. In the video, he said he didn't want to do commissions, so he was giving an explanation, so we could go out and make our own version of it. And I did make my own version of it. Of course, this is not finished. I have not decided whether I want to paint it, or if I just want to leave it look like a Frankenstein's monster nerf. And we'll put a link below to my Etsy shop, which is mostly cosplay supplies involving my main channel but there is uh, this blaster here from one of my other videos that I did where I took this apart uh, repainted it and increased the spring tension in here I did not remove the air restrictor because if you remove the air restrictors it will cause both darts to fire at once but this is up on the Etsy shop for what I feel is a rather affordable price if you would like to check that out and possibly purchase it and I also have a red hood inspired painted disruptor it has been uh, black vinyl dye with airbrushing for the splattered red and the metallic gold. The air restrictor has not been removed, but it has been drilled out. This stops the internals from slamming super hard, but does give you an extra 10 feet per second or so. So that's pretty cool, too. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some ideas and some stuff to do. And if you'd like to see more videos from me about different blasters that I mod, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment below. Sorry I haven't been able to get back to some of your comments on my videos, but this is my secondary channel, and I am pretty busy between the Facebook, Instagram, and my main YouTube channel that it's kind of hard for me to get here. But anytime I do something that I feel is pretty cool, I will upload here. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.